So this, is, this video is not using a very specialized technique to quarter saw. This video is about don't worry about the technique that you're using, worry about the grain orientation key is that no matter what quarter sawing pattern you use, you've got two steps. First step, set the log up so that you're always aligned down the axis of the log. The blade goes in here, it's got to come out on the other end. I typically like my alignment to be within a quarter of an inch. It'd be hard on this log because the crack's that big, but I like to align the blade to within a quarter of an inch if possible. And then as I'm going to take a board, whatever technique I use, I want my board to be as parallel to the crack, which puts it perpendicular to the growth rings as possible. There's a crack, I'll just make a straight line, come here, make a straight line, there's my growth rings. That'll be a quarter saw on board and we'll show Ray Fleck as long as I've done those two steps. Let's saw this thing up. I'm tired of using my crane. I about wore it out. Put a sticker or something down on the bed. Measure straight up from the bed to here. And I'm seeing about 23 and a quarter, 23 and a half. Let's go to the other side right at the center of the log, 23 and a quarter, 23 and a half. So what we're going to do, is we're going to take this face off, I'm going to rotate it, take that face off, and either this face down the entire length of the log will be parallel to the axis on this face, and it means that as we rotate around this face, will now be parallel to the axis. That's key on quarter sawing. This is one of the reasons you like to have a wide head sawmill. This is a big wide log. I'm gonna try not to take too much of it, waste that much. But... That one is right at 19 and a half. There. You want to leave enough meat here so you can cut this facet. The way this log is so messed up on this side, it does turn out that I've squared this corner off. Normally you'd try to avoid that, but I had to do it. Always drop your toe board before you make a stake and forget they're up. This is a big one. This is you gotta be careful turning these guys. You don't, really don't want them to slam down if you can help it. We're gonna rotate it another time. Kind of gentle on my sawmill. Trying to hang up on the back side. Kind of work it a little bit. Try to get it down fairly gently. Good enough. Nineteen. 20. This side needs to come up about an inch. Probably about right. Last face we need to align. 
That's there at 17 and a half. The key is to take as much as that spark off as possible because you need these corner lines to be references. So one thing that's really important, and I got a lot of comments on my last quarter song videos, is no, this doesn't have to be a perfect gun barrel. Doesn't need to be, there's no reason for it to be. The main thing is that these facets have corners that go all the way down the log, because when you're rotating these corners along with these faces may be reference points. And if you don't cut these facets right, then these corners aren't gonna come out right, and your wood's not gonna come out right. So remember the two rules of quarter sawing? Step number one, get the log aligned by gun barreling. We've done that. We're gonna move into phase two. We're gonna rotate over to a good face. I like, take that whole crack out. Kind of tired of looking at it. So the next step is you wanna take two or three right out of the middle. Come on, baby. All I got to do is follow the lines, and that's all you got to do. So, with a jelly roll, I'm going to rotate up with the first facet, setting up for what I would normally call a jelly roll technique, which puts this facet on the bottom. The problem is I want my first few boards from here. This is about three and a half, four inches, four inches. And you'll notice how acute the lines are. So I'm not going very perpendicular to the grain right here. Now, once I get down to here, I will. But when you consider this is the center of the the center of the half log, I won't be actually perpendicular to the grain till I've sawn all this down, which means there's going to be a lot of wood that's not going to be right. Now I'm going to rotate this down a little bit and get these lines a little more aligned with the mill blade, and that will then give me a higher chance of hitting flex. I can be taking these guys and I'm already going to be a lot closer to perpendicular. When I get to here, I'll definitely be perpendicular. So I've got a lot better chance of hitting, getting quarter sawn fleck doing this than otherwise. Let's cut these things. So I normally don't stop after that cut, but I figured you wouldn't believe me if I told you it worked without at least showing you some proof and it worked out perfectly. Look at the fleck. And remember, I'm, I'm still high. So this is the worst. I'm right here on my angle. Once I take another board, I'm gonna get better and better. Now there is gonna be some waste right here. There's no doubt that triangle's gotta come off but when you consider the resale value of quarter sawn lumber versus flat sawn, there is a little waste there. But once I get more perpendicular, that's gonna disappear, another couple boards. So everything after that little wedge, the further I go down, the better it's gonna get. I'm not gonna check every board. I know they're gonna be good. I mean, this is my first day to run a sawmill. So I'm just guessing, but I think they'll be good. But yes, I'm getting some real nice fleck. Some of these are, well, four inches wide. And we're still not at the best part of the log. So you gotta use your brain. You gotta rely on your experience. You gotta rely on what rely on what people are teaching you if you're learning. 
because a lot of times sawmilling is not a Betty Crocker recipe book. You have to be able to make adjustments on the fly. So I wasn't completely happy with the ray fleck on that last board. So I'm gonna go ahead and rotate over and see if I can get a little bit better on this angle. I probably should have took one more board on that previous rotation, but I thought I was getting pretty close to the pith and the way the crack looked on the center, I really didn't want to go any further in knowing that I could rotate up and get some wide boards uh, here on this rotation at almost 90 degrees. But once I got past the over-rotated wedge, I don't know if that makes any sense or if I just confused you, but I pretty much just confused myself. So. Either way, uh, flip it and cut. You can see why I did that previous rotation. I'm getting right into the perpendicular cuts, uh, flat to flat. These are very wide and they are the most perpendicular and the widest on the cant at this point. So that's kind of why I did that. Looks like it's going to turn out well, but um, you never know until you actually do it. I have noticed that a lot of people get really confused on this last quarter section. This is where those crayon lines really pay off. You can see that I'm rotating the back facet against the back stops and that the apex of the quarter has an almost perpendicular line going straight to, straight to the face. So again, I will be cutting down from the top side here and I, as I go down through it, I will be getting the widest boards being most perpendicular. The best boards are coming off at the best time at the widest point. Now, I don't really want to go all the way through because um, it starts to get hard to hold and we have a problem with the clamp getting in the way of the saw blade, which is never good. So a lot of times I'll stop right about here I know there's really good fleck on this one. I'll flip this side down to the bed, right. just like I'm about to do, and then I will saw down to the bed knowing that the widest boards, once again, will have the greatest fleck, because I just looked at it. Got some beautiful ray fleck on them. You got to get in the sun just right to see it, unfortunately. Layer after layer. Beautiful boars. Chip fin rolling in the dirt. He's a good dog. He's a good dog. He's like, why are you filming me? He says, is it time to go back to the house yet? If you ever have any questions, about how I do this stuff, feel free to send a message to Chip or Lucy. They watch me all the time. Don't you, Lulu? And uh, they get up here on a four-wheeler out in the grass. 
if you watch me cut some wood. Any questions at all that you have, comments, anything, myself, Lucy, or Chip, we'll be glad to answer them because that's just who we are. This is pretty wood, though. It ain't good wood, but sure is pretty. We'll see y'all next time. Y'all have a good day. Thanks for visiting our sawmill. Click on the links above to see more of our videos.